Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. I'm now back in my studio, but this time last week I was enjoying the tropical climate of the Caribbean. Returning to the UK was a big shock to the system. Anyway, enough about the past. What can we expect as we go through the next two weeks? I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 5th. It uses data from the GFS model. At the outset, there are outbreaks of rain in the north, and on the northern edge there, there is some sleet or snow. Southern and central counties are mainly dry and mild. In the short term, showery conditions push down across all regions, and it could become very windy for a time on Thursday. Then on Friday, as that colder air continues filtering southwards, showers increasingly turn to sleet or snow, and I think we need to keep an eye on this area of low pressure, which is pushing eastwards across the English Channel, according to this computer model run. But some of them have it going a little bit further north, and if that happens, it brings the potential for rain, sleet, or even wet snow in southern and central Britain. Just, as I say, something to keep an eye on um, as the time approaches. Regardless, though, of where it goes, it does look as though cold and showery conditions will be continuing into and through the weekend, but then things possibly begin to change. Outbreaks of rain start moving up from the southwest. Those are associated with these areas of low pressure in the Atlantic, and they lead to the possibility of further sleet or snow for a time in central and northern Britain as they bump into that cold air, but it will be turning milder in the south at least, according to this animation, by the time it finishes on Wednesday the 13th of April for outbreaks of rain, southern and central Britain. But high pressure centre to the north is still keeping things rather cold and mostly dry there in Scotland. So a lot of weather happening through the first seven days or so. Just taking a look at the air temperature sequence associated with that GFS run, at the outset the greens are indicating uh, temperatures to be a little bit above the average at this level, so about 1500 metres above sea level, but the cold air quickly moves down from the north and later on it's still staying in place over Scotland, but the milder air there is starting to push northeastwards across southern and central parts of the UK at least. Also, it's worth keeping an eye on this very warm air, which is shown over continental Europe. There is the possibility with a rather amplified pattern in place across, across Europe and the Atlantic that that could make its way in our direction at some point in the not too distant future. So although the focus is very much on the likelihood of colder conditions through the first week, I think we do need to keep the uh, possibility of it turning much warmer at some point later this month in mind. How do the two metre temperatures respond to the changing air mass? Here are the values forecast for 15 GMT, Wednesday, April the 6th. Maximums are around 12 Celsius in southern and central Britain, cooler as you head northwards and very cold very much far north of Scotland. Then going forwards to 06 GMT, Saturday the 9th, this is showing minimums. By now the cold air mass has moved down across all parts of the UK and the weekend's beginning with a wide spread frost into the afternoon and maximums are 8, 9, 10 in the south, colder once more as you head into Northern England and Scotland. It's worth pointing out though that at this time of the year if there are showers about those temperatures will quickly tumble and it will feel very cold indeed. Another possibility of course is that we could have longer spells of rain, sleet or snow as I mentioned and if that happens temperatures are likely to be suppressed. This shows uh, an, an example Monday the 11th 15 GMT we've got that rain and milder air moving up from the southwest but in central Britain their values are around 3 or 4 Celsius, very cold indeed if it's correct, but it is a little bit far off as I say to be confident about this particular evolution. Snow. 
I think the risk is mostly in the northern half of Britain. These charts are from the UK V model, and for one on the left shows precipitation type, for one on the right is snow depth. They are valid for Thursday morning. The snow depth one shows accumulations over high ground in northern England and very substantial falls over the Scottish mountains. It's, there isn't anything in southern and central counties of England or southern Wales, a little bit there over high ground in northern Wales, perhaps Snowdonia, for instance. I've also mentioned, though, there is that possibility, that chance of low pressure tracking a little bit further north through Friday, and that may be the best chance of southern counties seeing at least a little bit of falling snow through this period. Nonetheless, as I say, the focus looks to be on the north. Another thing to flag up is the possibility of it turning very windy for a time, at least in parts of the UK. The MoGreps chart here for London is suggesting gusts of between 45 and 50 miles an hour on the 7th of April, so it could be quite nasty if it's correct. Going up to Glasgow, doesn't look as windy around this time, although there are a few runs in the ensemble which are bringing in similar strengths, but the majority of them are going for something lower. Rainfall. Days 0 to 5, ECM, the European model on the left, GFS, the United States main model on the right. Both reasonably consistent, the highest totals there across Scotland. And quite a lot of that could well be fallen as sleet or snow because this is showing accumulated precipitation, so it's not strictly rainfall. Going ahead to the days not to 10 charts, ECM again on the left is pointing towards a wet or very wet picture in the west and the north. Totals in places well over 100 millimetres. GFS is showing a similar profile, similar distribution, but it's not as wet, the totals were significantly lower, particularly in the northwest. But all parts of the UK can expect some rain throughout the 10 day period if these are correct. So the GFS was suggesting that milder air would be beginning to return from the southwest at the end of the first week. Is it consistent with the other models. Well, just to recap, here is the GFS. So it's quite a mixed picture over the UK. That's the very warm air I mentioned over continental Europe, which needs watching. Looking at the Canadian model, similar story here. It's quite a changeable picture. And the German Icon model, again, reasonably consistent, low pressure centered to the west, the southwest. The European ECM, once again, that's, that's got low pressure to the west of the UK, that milder air moving up across most of the country. And finally, the UK Met Office Global, a similar story with low pressure here close to Northern Ireland. All in all, a changeable or, or unsettled end to the first week with showers or longer spells of rain likely just some uncertainty about exactly where those areas of low pressure will be centred and whether or not colder air will still be embedded over at least the northern half of the United Kingdom. Well, there's a lot happening through the first week. What about the second? As ever, at this range, it's all about using the ensemble data to try and identify the trends and the probabilities rather than the specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London, air mass temperatures across the top, thick purple line is the ensemble mean, and it's remaining above the 30-year norm, the thick black line throughout. But there are some runs bringing in colder conditions, and particularly the GFS operational, which is shown by the thick green line there. It's going for a colder spell lasting maybe two or three days. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Rainfall across the bottom, spikes here, suggest quite an unsettled start to the second week, but the number of them decreases and it looks like there would be a lot of dry periods. Going up to Glasgow, 
The air mass profile is a little bit different because the ensemble means starting below the 30-year norm, most of the runs are supporting it. And although it does recover later on, it stays close to that thick black line. And the GFS operational is bringing in an extended period of colder weather here. Rain across the bottom, more spikes than there were on the London uh, plot, although the number decreases later on as well, perhaps suggesting more drier periods towards the end. Looking at the two meter, day, two meter temperature data table for London, mostly light yellows, those for the majority through the first few days, runs going for between 11 and 15 Celsius, but it's worth noting that the amount of orange is increasing, 16 to 20 Celsius. Also, for a one or two going into the darker orange bucket, the 21 to 25 Celsius category, those are probably tapping into that very warm air mass that I discussed over continental Europe. Glasgow, the general trend is a similar one, albeit at a lower level, light greens initially, maximums of between 6 and 10, but the yellows there increase up to 77%, those are the 11s to 15s. So it's a cooler or colder picture as you head northwards. The mean surface level pressure data table for York suggests that pressure will probably be close to or above the average, especially through the middle and second half of the uh, second week, perhaps lower there early on as that area of low pressure and weather fronts move up from the southwest. Not that far from the norm though, perhaps, and there is some uncertainty here with um, a number of runs in the green category, low, lower pressure, and some going for significantly higher pressure, the oranges, which are 1,026 to 1,040 millibars. All in all, though, I think on balance, high pressure probably just edging it. And that idea is supported by the GEFS ensemble mean at day 10, so Friday the 15th of April, high pressure nudging up from the southwest according to the GEFS. And that general theme is supported by the European ECM with high pressure there to the south of the UK. The uh, pressure anomaly chart for days 10 to 15 generated from the GEFS data is also going for a positive anomaly over the UK. The yellows there indicate it, seven to 10 millibars really above the average when taken over the period as a whole. It supports the idea of drier conditions towards the end of the forecast period after that unsettled spell through the first week and into the early part of the second one. So, to summarise, week one, cold air moves southwards through the first couple of days and showers turn increasingly wintry. There is a chance of a period of rain, sleet or wet snow affecting southern and central counties on the 8th, but a good deal of uncertainty because the area of low pressure which would bring it may head further south and move across northern France. If that happens, it stays dry. It's also likely to be very windy on the 7th, particularly in the south and the west. The MOGREPS ensemble suggests that gusts could be between 45 and 55 miles per hour in the London and home counties area. As it turns colder, the risk of frosts increases once more and temperatures could really dip quite low on some nights. Later on, the risk of rain returns as milder air tries to push in from the southwest there is uncertainty about the timing and progression of that. And as the rain moves into central northern counties, if it does, it may well turn to sleet or snow for a time. Week two, the general theme is for it to be quite unsettled early on. The chance of rain then reduces, although it doesn't go away. But the, uh, the likelihood of dry periods increases and also temperatures probably start to climb. So, 
there we have it. It's quite a wintry picture. Strong winds, frost and even snow, all featuring in the forecast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please do remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.